After months of deferrals, the Miami-Dade Commission voted this week to breach the environmental urban development boundary for an industrial complex. One commissioner called that an incredible land grab, but eight commissioners voted to allow this warehouse and commercial district in South Dade beyond the UDB. The supermajority vote this week came after a series of those deferrals when one commissioner who had opposed it changed her vote to yes. That commissioner is Raquel Regalado here live today with us to dive into why. Great to see you. Thanks for being with us. Commissioner Regalado, great to see you. Thank you for joining us. So the obvious Thanks. question to begin with, excuse me, the first question is why did you change your vote? What were the elements that made you believe that in fact uh, it's okay to build beyond the UDB down there in deep South Dade? Well, first and foremost, there's three of us that represent South Dade, and I am one of those commissioners, and we've been grappling with this issue for some time. The urban development boundary was actually established to protect ag uh, and also to prevent urban sprawl. And what we've been discussing for this application in particular is how to handle land that the Board of County Commissioners had previously decided that was in the urban expansion area. So I know that we're going to talk a little bit about the process, but it's important for folks to understand that one of the things that the Board of County Commission does is say there's the urban boundary line and then there's the area where we want folks to expand into. For me, this application, when it was first presented, was an abomination. It was enormous uh, and it actually covered a lot of land that I believe should be preserved. At the Board of County Commissioners, we've been working with our federal and state partners for decades to preserve part of this land. But even though that's the case, since there hasn't been anything finalized and just a bunch of committees, in 2018, the Board of County Commissioners decided that this should be part of the urban expansion area. Um, I brought up the concept of being proactive about preservation instead of reactive, instead of waiting for the federal government to decide and find money to maybe purchase this land. What I brought to my fellow commissioners uh, and what they found interesting was the idea of developing 311 acres of this, but preserving twice that, 622 acres most of which are environmentally endangered lands that have actually been on a list that Miami-Dade County has of land that we want to purchase since 1992. Okay, so, so let, me, let me just um, capsulize because I, I really want to get in some other things in the tight time that we have. So, so there is good and bad, and you were weighing environmental versus development, and that's kind of the big picture here. Um, and, and I do want to talk about process a little bit because it is no secret that developers in this county do have a hand in crafting legislation it's not a secret. It was never really quite as public as when the team jumped up and stopped what would have been a no vote to get a deferral instead. So, so my question to you is, how does the public now trust? And, and for the record, no shade to this project, no shade to the process, just it is what it is. How do you get the public to really trust that the government is really doing the work of the people and not of the developers? Well, I think that there's been a lot mentioned about the process and we definitely as a board of county commissioners have to sit and discuss the entire process. We are going to be discussing in my committee on Thursday possible changes to the deferral as a result of what occurred with this application. But just so that folks understand, you know, and I said this at several meetings, uh, this is something that I've said throughout this entire process with this application in particular, if the Board of County Commissioners does not want to entertain applications on moving the urban development boundary, we should vote on a moratorium. And no one has wanted to do that. We actually have three more applications that are already in queue and one that was sent you know, to the state of Florida to return to us. So I think it's important for people to understand that the way that the process is set up right now Folks uh, have to listen to the Board of County Commissioners, to the public, and they have the ability to change their application. And this application changed a lot. And one of the things that I said in our one of our last meetings was I would only agree to a deferral if we had public comment again, because it was a completely different application than what was originally presented. And we were able to hear from the public again. But now we have a new commission. I mean, in, in two weeks, we're going to have yeah. a brand new set of people. And I think we have to sit down and really look at this process process, 
what we want to do with the urban development boundary. Because right now we're talking about the environmental piece and I have added that conversation to this process, but historically that's not what it's about. It's been about ag and it's been about sprawl. And, and I think sprawl has already happened and agriculture is in a very difficult situation right now and has really changed. So there's a lot of moving parts to it, but we also have the issue of the applications that come in cycle now in 2023 and how much of the process can we change while those yeah. applications come before the board. We, we, we understand. And you know, to your credit, you got the developer to agree to donate two environmentally acres of environmentally sensitive land of the county for every acre that was approved. So, you know, good on you for that. But you know, the, the criticism of the project need not tell you, you know, a chapter and verse is that this is low line flood prone uh, land, it's farmland, and that, you know, developing it even in a ecologically sensitive way, you know, might jeopardize the environmental, the uh, Everglades redevelopment uh, protection plan that the feds have got going. So what is your response to that? Well, I mean, the feds have been considering this land and other land for decades. And the health of the Everglades and Biscayne Bay is a priority for all of us, which is why I think it's important to change the county's reactive, let's hope that the feds do this 10 years from now and actually safeguard this land right now. 622 acres may not sound like a lot, but it is the largest preservation that Miami-Dade County is going to do in this type of application. I mean, we, we manage over 20,000 acres of environmentally endangered lands, but we have a wish list of another 38,000 acres. And these lands have been on this wish list since I was in high school. So I, it is it is a balance. And I think that the fact that, you know, they brought up the ag piece and I have been very critical of the ag argument in this particular case because this land has saltwater intrusion, which is why we have been considering it for preservation. And it has very little utility for ag. And the folks that are farming it are telling us that it's difficult, if not impossible, to farm it. So and, and one thing that I think is important for folks to understand on the ag piece, because what I've said has been taken out of context, you know, because some commissioners really focused on the ag piece. We passed an ordinance in Miami-Dade County so that you and I and Glenna, you know, cannot use pesticides during the rainy seasons because the Biscayne Bay report says that pesticides are in part, you know, what's creating the algae that is destroying the bay. But ag cannot, you know, abide by that because we cannot regulate them. And that's the excuse that they use. And what I have said is just because the state preempts us doesn't mean that our ag partners can't do the right thing. Yeah. Agriculture is changing and, and we can't protect an area that is, is pushing pesticides. Ra Raquel, we are out of time. Raquel's a broadcaster. She knows what that means. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thanks so much for those insights. Really appreciate Thank it. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Right, appreciate take care. it. Thank you.